Are you listening to? Uh, I don't know. Beethoven. Yeah, actually, it was. Yeah, well done. Sick. Bang on the money, Sick. mate. Well done. Sick. Yo, <laughs> man. How's it going? Right. Well, I suppose we should get on with it then. Oh, so, I, I mean, I tried to like write down how like I felt about this, mm. and how it's also kind of bizarre, really, that the first time that me and you will heard the song was when the day we were mixing it, essentially. Do you know what I mean? Fully. Because that was when it was completed, when we were putting the vocals on. Yes. And it's kind of surreal that something was finished, I don't know, the day that we first fully heard it as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like, you're right. That was something the Something that yeah. was started like three years ago. And I was actually like thinking back, it came from you teaching me how to use logic, which is so mad. Like, I, you was like, right? And it was just yeah, like, well, I had those chords. And then like, you were showing me how to use synths mm. and like how to program them all in. And the fact that it's coming to a song from that is, is kind of mad. Yeah. Well, it was. Um, I've, I've got the, the demo of the tune. This was, so this was like, obviously you know this world, but like this was a song submitted for like uni. Yeah. And um, the goal was, I mean, to like work with on each song, like a different producer or someone making the tune. And this was what came out with Will. Um, and it, when I submitted it, it actually was under the name Christine McJarvis. And that, <laughs> we, we were going with this name, right? Because. At the time, I think realistically, if I look back, I was trying to understand in my head yesterday and think what I was like thinking with it when it first came out. And like, it, it was such a time of like transitioning of what the kind of sound I had. Like, Will knows this. Like, I was literally playing rock guitar for so long and writing only rock songs. And I knew that like I wanted to make something kind of funky and groovy. Like, that's what I deeply love. Yeah, boy. Um, but, and I don't know, probably in calling it you know, this is the artist Christina Jarvis. <laughs> because I didn't want to be like, this is me now. Do you know, do you know what I mean? It's kind yeah, of weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll play it now. It's, you'll laugh at how much slower it is. Come on. Um, and there's a little sample at the beginning as well, which is the voice note they came from. Is that coming out for you guys? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Oh, fuck's sake. Bro, that kicked me. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, hard. It's kind of hard. Ah, uh, and they're putting the trombone in the yeah, front. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon the tempo is good. It's way slower though, isn't it? Yeah. You should probably know that you're so much slower, though, it? 
That's mental. It's, it's it. like a different. It, it's almost like a different tune. That's like yeah. low, to me. Like this is just a reaction video now. This isn't like yeah. a, <laughs> this is a this is a this is one of those YouTube reaction videos. Like it's you know what, it kind of though. reminds me of like early George Michael, but in a really good way. Fair. There we go. Oh, that's good. That's Fair. good. I don't know that much George Michael, but I'm sure like Morgan. Like, I'm sure like if that's something oh, you would have like gone for. Like that's that's <laughs> mad. <laughs> Killed I mean, me. <laughs> So, I mean, like, yeah, from that, we, we were talking, Will, and, like, I remember the two uh, songs and bands that were, like, the main goal to emulate were mm. uh, the, the Batman, Party Man, Prince uh, song on the Batman soundtrack, like, the 90s one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the synth sounds from that. I mean, the synth, right, yeah. And, it. Um, and Cheryl Lynn, to be real, because, like, it's just a bop, it? yeah, but... It's just a That's massive cool. bop. Yeah. Um, That's a big song. I don't for like the first bit. For the verse uh, bit. Dun, 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 dun. I think oh, that was kind of like the general. It does, like, yeah. Ooh, it does have that. Like, I, I don't remember you playing me that when we were making it, but sick. It has. I, I was. I was very nice. Back, at the time, because this was like three years ago, right? I, I was thinking back to what was like probably the main inspiration. It was definitely uh, beat tape. And uh, you know that yeah. mixtape that you put out, where it's got um, <laughs> oh, Tom Mish, by the way. Mm. Um, like. It's got um, Crazy Dream on it with Lil Kana. And we kind of just accepted, well, I kind of just accepted it was going to be this like weird instrumental verse in the chorus, and it was just that for ages. And then we'd obviously spoken for ages about maybe having a rapper or something yeah. like that. Yeah, for real. Um, to just take up that space. Mm. Um, and then that was obviously what led to it becoming this challenge. Yes. Um, which is cool. Like, uh, it's the perfect song to, to to open up, really, because it was such a, you know, it, it needed it. It really needed it, to be fair. Like, it needed some input. And I definitely just didn't have it in me to finish it, you know. And I'm so happy that what we've got now is, you know, with obviously you, Jess, because it's... Yeah. You kind of made your bed though, naming it Figure It Out, didn't you? Because you're like, <laughs> As, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you, you could you could uh, almost argue that I've been planning this for years. Yeah, but it's it's just kind of. Could you know, imagine if that was the whole thing? If, if it like, was this gonna calculated, gonna finish the song. You're gonna call it a really cryptic title that makes people like psychosomatically have to finish it. <laughs> but I can't, because I've, I've named my own song Figure It Out. I will never finish it myself. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I think it's more just me being really fucking lazy. Probably, <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah but. but, like, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's the sort of instrumental world. How many sessions? I was saying to Raw and stuff last night, like, we were probably on, like, version 10 or 12 of it. 
before it was the final one, right? We, uh, yeah, but the bulk of it stayed quite similar. That we've got that version we did. That was over two the, sessions, I remember. I yeah, think yeah. We had that, that late night I, one, the logic lesson. Yeah. Uh, and then you came back a few months later and did Bones. So that would have been two for that version. Two for that. I remember then... we made the one that's out now. And then I remember, like, I was tweaking something or doing drums and you fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so then I, I did, like, the Simpsons stuff in the chorus. And I remember yeah. putting, putting your headphones in yeah. your head um, when I'd done, like, some bits and... And then he came back and then he woke up just like. I still to this day don't think I'd ever heard anything more beautiful than that <laughs> moment when when all the percussion and synths were coming in and I was like, shit. That, yeah. When I was writing the vocals for it, it's, um, that, uh, 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 that line, it was like this old, I think I even texted it to you. I was like, I'm, I've got this like weird old school garage kind of vocal um hook in my head and it's on the tip of a tongue but now i think it's time to face it we were never just a phase yeah i'm sad to on my own and it just sits with this track and i'm gonna i'm gonna put it in it and you were like awesome can't wait to hear it and um and it i kind of think i think i underestimated just how well that worked because like mm. as soon as the track comes in you've got that Lyrically, was it, it was actually a bit of a challenge at first because, like, ah, I was sat there for like ten minutes. But, but, but what does he mean? What does he yeah. mean? Just really trying to figure it out. So, <laughs> 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 do you remember me texting you, being like, "But what do you mean, more?" Yeah, and, and that was honestly, I really found that difficult and almost kind of confronting and scared when people were asking me that. Yeah, because I've never had to explain it. But now I've actually had time to think about it. It was, I mean, yeah, it was three years ago. Um, the relationship I was in at the time was not going well and I think I my way of dealing with it was um, avoiding and just trying to not ask the question of so is this over like it, it, I didn't want to call to find out that it was over do you know what I mean like because I knew that if I called you like it's, it was fucked anyway there's no point but that's kind of perfect in a way for for you and me to do that because Obviously, we know each other so well now. And it was like this conversation between two people who were super close. And that's what that song turned into. Like, for me, mm. it was like, okay, I'll put myself in the shoes of the person in this relationship. And it's a conversation. So how would the other person respond? What are they thinking, mm. et cetera? And that, I wanted the song to be like a conversation based around that, that chorus, you know? Yeah. So it's like things that, you know, when you say that it's about avoidance and stuff like that, you know, this is where the lyric kind of like, I know it's hard to take um, like water in your lungs. Um, I know it's hard to say when it's on the tip of your tongue, you know, it's stuff that you can't get out. But it's, Completely. You know, it's this conversation that two people are quite, kind of like afraid to have this conversation, but you need to mm. figure it out. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. What happened, yeah. And it's, it's really nice. I mean, you know, like a, a personal note as well, being able to do a duet in a way, a modern yeah. day duet with you is so nice. They're usually so cringe to me. I don't like yeah. duets at all, but no. I feel like that one worked quite nicely. Yeah, and I feel like it would be, you know, a lie not to call it that because it kind of is. It is such a conversation, but then that's what you've done. You've made it that conversation. And lyrically, I don't think I would have been able to come up with a verse that really brought that out. To be honest, you know, I think I think you would have been able to, but I think the whole maybe the whole reason why this song was so hard to finish lyrically was because it was always supposed to be a conversation. Yeah, you can't uh, do that with one person. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think since since doing the the challenge, um, I, I I couldn't be happier to have done that. Um, I mean, Ross Carlo did his fucking remix of it was insane as well. Mm. That was so cool. Um, we had like Millie, we had like some singers involved as well that was just so Declan lovely. Did one as well. Declan did one as well, yeah, and like mm. it was so cool, but there was something about you understanding that it needed this old school garage vibe. It <laughs> was exact because I think that's where my head's at now as well. Sonically, it's not like that, you know, it's more on the funk side of things, as you say, but like 
I don't know, it just, it just came out from somewhere. It's, it's, uh, it was just, that's the sound that it asked me to make with my mm. voice. <laughs> so yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. Should we look at the project? Yeah. So drums and percussion, like that. And then the cowbells, we've got this one. And then there's a little shaker, but then we've got also a little go-go's as well. They just kind of come through as like a little layer because they're a bit gentler. Although they're like, I guess, a bit more toppy, they're just a bit quieter. So they're more yeah. like a layer than anything too uh, imposing. And they came fresh out of uh, Ableton's percussion packs. Sick. Ableton packs are sick. So <laughs> sick. Plug for Ableton. Um, Can we talk yeah, about that that fat kick while we're on percussion? <laughs> Kicks. Just uh, that's do for treatment one, just more click. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I do bare drums, transient master things that make things click. Uh, we've got, that's not even do it. Uh, it's filtering. Solid EQ has the best low pass filter because it's really smooth. Uh, plug again. And then there's even more on the kick here. We've got something here that's a uh, an EQ for low end and middle. Um, well, that's nice. Um, oh, and this as well. This is one I've done since day. Um, is like the tie pass thing. Like if I play it now, um, like it's kind of just catching the note, like which is about there. It's about an F sharp. I remember trying to like tune it basically. But then you can. Then I use this thing, uh, which uh, for. Anyone who uses Waves plugins out there and you've used R bass, like this is like UA's version of R bass, it's called Little Labs, and like it kind of boosts the frequency. It's like a high pass filter with a resonant peak, but it kind of does something a bit magical. Um, I can't put my finger on it, but I just tried it and was like, cool, that's sick. And then there's another compressor. Um, I rarely use this one actually, but um, I used, I put it on this, like it was like the last thing I did in the mix was put this compressor on it and it did a lot. I go like whatever, trying to get the best out of a sound, like that's with any sound, but especially yeah. drums. And it's like, I did normal things, but then I did some extra things. And one thing was like, was this thing, like in the context, like it needed it. If I turn, if I turn this off, like, it says it's a little bit quieter, but then turn it on and it brings out the, the click of it way more, which yeah, in the yeah. tune that really, really needs actually. Um, yeah, even even is. after a transient master for 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 um for putting more click on it like like bear this mid range on this for click um it still needed another thing it's who knows it just go with the flow and it happens uh, <laughs> and so we we obviously had the the program drums and that was always yeah. going to be like a thing but then Ollie mm -hmm had recorded himself absolutely ripping over it yes. and put it in for his challenge. So we just, it kind of felt like it would be almost a crime not to have that in. Of course, and it really lifted it. Like I was amazed like doing that, like hearing when I stuck it on the other day and I was like, last chorus comes in really hard and it's yeah. all thanks to uh, this guy. Where is it? Like, basically it's full kit thing, but then I just sidechain the hell out of it, which if I take off, you'll hear a full groove now. But yeah. in the middle of the thing, it just gives it like the perfect, like, like. Yeah, mid. you're just so right, yeah. <laughs> got that movement it might be a little bit too much but that's almost like a thing I, I find with this house stuff and just doing stuff like that just too much it's fun as hell yeah <laughs> completely um, it is and it i think one thing that i and you probably can relate as well guys like when you're doing those like program drums you're so desperately trying to inject the amount of human energy into there um and having that just i don't know really gave it that yeah, which is really cool you know I, it, in fact that's literally my life now is like balancing or take a real drum set and then replace the kicks with electronic ones and like finding how do you uh, mixtures of the two worlds. Like obviously there's like a million ways. There's so many ways to do it. 
that mm. obviously it's not about the right and wrong. It's like whatever's going to suit for what tune, like whatever yeah. what you want to go like a little bit like harder and more electronic um, and whatever you want to be like more real. But yeah, for this, like, you know, if you've written this from a funk and soul point of view and like, and the vibe is like that, especially when it comes to things like the synths and the chord style, like to have to go like electronic drums, then plus real drums, like no brainer. Like the real drums is like, it's how it was always done. The fact that yeah. the air is always going to be like, it's almost like a tip of the hat, like to the real, the real thing. Do you know what I mean? From like a yeah. modern electronic perspective, like acknowledging that, no, we got to like, just kind of wait to the old school thing, which is cool. Yeah. Can we talk about the, those, us? Yes. Um, because that we were talking about sounds <laughs> Those little guys were. Did we go? We, we were talking about either phaser or chorus, weren't we? And we're oh, A, B, yeah. and the two. <laughs> we're balancing it all the time. It is now um, uh, UA's replica of the MXR. What is it? I think it's flat. Yeah, it's in flanger mode. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a little zing. <laughs> Take it off. It's like. Which is super cool. But it's like. You know, either way, it would sound really good. And it's just kind of like making, making the, uh, you know, the little sound changes. So then there's more things like that. It's then wavered out a bit more. Then when the lead comes in, it's got mm. more like it shines more as well. Yeah. So big up. Yeah, no, it's, it's really up. cool. It it does it does definitely make the lead pop through a lot more. Um, yep. My my favorite thing, and I remember we completely lost our mind when we were on the subjects for phone calls is that that little call and response line in the second verse that how do you feel oh yeah just, that was crazy we i think yeah, i like yeah. wept <laughs> genuinely yeah. jess like not an exaggeration like when we found that you'd done that yeah it's like fuck like I honestly was yeah but mm. when you're doing that because obviously you were on your own doing it and stuff and just making this from a place of just like you were creating this tune and just had free reign um, was you imagining like a band in your head and like a backing vocalist doing that line? No. Or no? No. What was you thinking with that? Because in my head, that's like the perfect thing a set of like backing vocalists would do, just like grooving. It's so bandy. I think because that's really interesting because I think um, as a singer, like, you think about things slightly differently than rather in a band perspective. Obviously, like a lot of singers also think in a band perspective. Me personally, I think I was just thinking, I don't even think I was thinking. I think I just felt and it came out. Nice. I think it was like trying to put yourself in the shoes of being in the conversation again. Cause it's like, if you were with somebody, Ooh. that's what you'd say to them. It's like, how do you feel? And you keep trying to get this from someone. So I think it needed to be repeated because that's the thing of the song isn't it you're not getting a straight answer from this person so yeah well yeah, no, I like it. <laughs> no like yeah. like is such an understatement i remember taking back that first mix wheel that we did and showing raw in the kitchen and being like this is one bit this one bit just listen to this and i was like, How do you? like every time i do this like hand gesture How do I with that particular line is I just wanted something kind of like floaty and atmospheric going on in the background because I like creating that with my vocals I like Ooh. creating this almost witchy uncomfortableness like there's a little bit of sparkle a little bit of magic going on in the background that's you know there's the lead and then you have all these like easter eggs of vocals almost like you you know with this yeah of course of course mm -hmm. it could have been like um, how do I go feel? It could have come out like this, yeah. but it felt like it needed to just be a more subtle, airy. Yeah. Like, yeah, delicate. It's another yeah. to it. Express the vulnerability of the person to it, you know. Yeah. It's super vulnerable. It's super. Oh. It feels yeah. like that, which is cool. It's like a phrase you're afraid to say, so it doesn't quite come out as strong as it should, but it needs to be said. Yeah. Get proper deep now, aren't we? Let's carry yeah, on. Of course, I, I feel <laughs> I feel like ignorant in a way, and it's it's. I have to ask these questions because I I really don't think from a singer's perspective. I'm I'm not a singer. I've accidentally ended up singing on my tunes, and, and that's just how it's worked. 
but, what would I do? <laughs> but, but, but my thoughts are, you know, my, my thought instantly was, you know, that, that's how I would have come up with a line like that. It's just imagining a band context and imagining a backing vocalist. So it's so interesting to get another insight of like what you're thinking, because genuinely my, my thought process as a singer is so different to yours. Do you know what's really interesting as well is like listening to the first demo of that track with your voice on it, mm. you can hear the maturity in your voice over those past three years. The first, the first kind of take of you singing it, it sounds very, it, I know it's you, but it sounds very different. And it's kind of yeah. nice in a way because you've re revisited a track with a more mature mindset behind it. And that's what the song is asking for, like mm. conceptually. It's a person that's not quite mature enough to have a conversation yet. 100%, yeah. So you come back to it when you have grown up a bit. You know, I think it was perfect well, to have them like that. I, I think that, I mean, I'm not saying that we didn't treat the vocals well of mine because we definitely did. You know, a lot of was, work was needed still. But that f very, very first instance of that first demo, they were also tuned to shit because I'd asked for that. I said to Raw, I want, I want you to really also tune this because I was so scared of how it was going to sound, man. I'd, I'd never, I'd never really sang on anything before that. I'd, I'd, I think I'd sang and recorded two tunes and they, they were all being submitted for that assignment, but I was too scared to let it be done. So yeah. I was like, let's just do it. And then we'll doctor it loads because, you know, I'll hide behind the fact that it's also tuned and whatnot. Mm. And now, you know, I'm a lot more confident in doing it now, you know, still not my thing, still don't love it. I'd sooner do. But isn't it wonderful to listen to and to see how that's grown? Mm. No. Massively. And Maybe I think I'll... Tone, like your, your, your tone seems to carry way more weight to it now. It's a bit more, I want to say gruff, but I don't think that's the right word. It's got a bit more texture to it. It's weathered. Like you've had, you mm. know, <laughs> stuff happened in those three years. Oh yeah. We've and lived. it comes out and it's nice. <laughs> But it was nice to begin with. I really liked the demo. I know you said it was doctored a fair bit, but like, it was really nice. And I think the vocals that's on it, on it now is perfect. It's got, it's got that weight, it's got that maturity behind it, which the song needs. So I think it worked out really well. I'm glad that, yeah, I'm glad that uh, conceptually I can match the song now and be more mature. I mean, I'm not saying I'm fucking there or anything, but you know what I mean? Like, I do feel like I've grown. And at that time when we first were doing this, Will, like, was so unsure of what I was doing musically. I knew I wanted to do something a bit different and it was a real big point of stress for me, to be honest. And I think I would actually genuinely really like to take the opportunity, if anyone is watching this, I don't know if they are, but just to say like, I get it, that it can be so difficult to think you have to be in one thing. I thought I had to be the rock guy for so long and I never ever thought I'd get the opportunity to make a different style of music and that sounds so silly because you've got a long life to live but I genuinely was like I might only ever be doing this forever and I'll be so gutted at myself and, you, create and, um, your, you create your world and then other worlds and then you step into them and you're like I'm gonna do this here like you know if you think you've got something to say as we will do if you've got something to say as of you know in doing original music with you know your own voice just do it that's, that's all that matters that's all that matters yeah. you've got something to say about music and like what's going you know and things that are going on just do it mm -hmm. i mean like, at the end of the day nobody wears the same clothes every single day exactly you put on a different outfit to express a different side of yourself don't you so why wouldn't you do that in other aspects of your life yeah. nobody owns one outfit yeah. Allow yourself to explore different things. Yeah, and I remember someone said this at uni uh, a couple of years ago, like a guest speaker on like an employability day, and there was, she was a songwriter, and she was saying, uh, just because you suddenly come out with this, uh, I think she had the example she used was like a French noir song, but you normally make dance music. Don't not finish it because it's it's that. Finish it and get that idea out of you. It's like. It's, uh, songwriting is very much like an existential. You do have to just get it out. Yeah. And if the, thing, if the thing you're trying to get out is a metal song, you've just got to get it out. You know what I mean? Or if it's you know a jazz song, if it's a what you know anything, just finish it. And that's something I'm definitely just talking to myself right now because we're, we're all so guilty of you know not finishing shit. I know you felt
Thank you.